Well, the time has come to give the four litre Renix some love, not that kind of love. But if you've been following the 1990 Renix restoration, I picked this vehicle up about a year ago. It didn't run. It now does run very well. Still needs a little bit of work on the engine, but you know, just replacing little things here and there, but that's that's just the way it goes. Really the main thing is, is when I pulled the carpet out, it had some corrosion underneath the carpet. So in this video, it's time to make a good start on this. And uh, my first port of call is attacking it with the grinder and the wire brush, just really to get rid of a lot of the corrosion, see what I'm working with. But let's take a first hand look. Well, I've pretty much finished with the wire wheel, just to give myself an idea of what is actually compromised and what's not, because once you start wire wheeling away at stuff, you quickly find out that things are worse than you think. So we'll start here just at the driver's footwell, and uh, you can kind of see that the floor pan here is pretty good. Like, there's absolutely nothing for me to do here. Closing that door, obviously rocker panel is going to need to sort of come out you know it's typical really but if you look underneath at the frame it's really good um, even here I mean you look at that that's crazy that it looks really great like, there's, there's like no corrosion at the front here at all moving up here and typically you usually get um, corrosion starting under the seam sealer where it comes up through the seam of this of where basically the wheel well joins to the sheet metal you've got a spot welded seam and they're, they're really shit for picking up corrosion so you kind of have them everywhere here and, and water gets in and it, it basically starts a chain reaction and even though the seam sealer can look great you grind away underneath it and you begin to see that you do have corrosion under the seam sealer so that's going to have to be fixed up too along with that now what I'm actually going to do with this is on the inside once I've replaced some of the corroded metal is I'm going to do what I did on my Jeep the diesel and permanently weld all the way along there and then I'm going to take a cut off wheel and remove that whole seam basically. And this is obviously my diesel Jeep and you can kind of see exactly what I mean. No seams anywhere, they've all gone. Oh, obviously it's been box rockered so that seam's gone there. And the drip rail is now seamless too because that's actually one solid piece of U-channel with like a 5mm wall running along there. And, and you can sort of see the original piece of metal um, there, welded permanently all the way along to that new piece of U-channel. So making the, the vehicle like seamless literally stops starting points for corrosion and that'll be what I'll be looking to do on the Renix whilst I'm working on it. But on the topic of seams, one place that I've really gotten lucky is the drip rails. Um, they're actually missing the molding that went on the side. You can see one of the clips there. Um, but the drip rails are in amazing condition as is the roof of the whole vehicle. It's literally rust free. There's just a little bit of a problem there where the weight of the snow has pushed down that central support. but. That can be fixed with seam sealer and some like a piece of two by four and a jig to push it up. But I'm very lucky with the roof, as you can see. But yeah, this is the shit side. So you can see the corrosion has kind of crept in underneath this piece here. I mean, I don't know how much I really care about that because like once you open it up with getting rid of the seam sealer, obviously you slow down the reaction massively because the water can actually go away and if you treated this properly then you, you you get more than a lifetime out of it you know so now i know what i'm dealing with um and i'm going to try and make a decision on what to do I, i'm actually a bit puzzled really but i'm just going to start by separating spot welds and sheet metal um in areas that don't look great 
and then kind of at the end of it sort of connect the dot like sort of like a shit kids drawing book you know I'm just gonna sort of find my way through this but I you can buy special tools to separate spot welds I've just got a 13 mil drill bit that's just what I'm gonna start off with and uh, see how that goes and also a hammer and a screwdriver I do have a chisel that I'm building um, the Dominator 9000 which can be used for other things so you know it's multifunctional mate it just goes back to my bushcraft days right like two is one and one in the bum kiss okay, that was a technique I like to call the nose bash This can always be hammered back. I accidentally went through on that one, but the others have separated out pretty easily, really. The only difficulty is actually seeing the spot welds, um, which isn't always easy, but there's one just there, I think. They're in kind of random places. And you can then kind of see the edge of the, of the metal. to come apart pretty easily so when you slide under the new piece of metal you can just pull some weld up you can always tap that back I guess tap and tap. So I haven't really done much talking in this because this is kind of just one of those jobs you've just got to get stuck into. Um, but uh, I've sort of made a bit of progress anyway. Obviously I've separated all that out, which is great. Although the quarter panel underneath is yet to be decided. But uh, you know, it's one of those jobs where you just take your time. Those holes there aren't going to exist anymore because this will be cut off 
all the way along there when the new piece of plate gets put in it will just be welded to that like I said and I think that there is as clean as it needs to be really I'm gonna dig into all of that when I do the box rockers and have a good look at it um, but this looks okay you know and it sort of gives me something to weld to um, but the frame the frame is nice the frame is the frame is decent I, I just don't really feel like I need to take away this bit because um, this is quite complicated and it doesn't look that bad so I'm sort of just removing the easy flat plate so I know I can run a strip up there basically or, or I'm gonna actually that was my first plan now now I'm actually taking all this out you can kind of just see it's it's just unsalvageable so I'm drilling spot welds I have found um, something else I can put in a few baggies and sell to the kids so that's pretty fucking sick I can make some money back off this piece of crap but yeah this is all uh, just too far gone yeah, in fact, that thing there was a bastard to get out. I made a real mess of it. It's over there. I don't want to look at it. It sickens me. Um, this side here, I don't know yet. I mean, this, this looks great. But it's just probably going to get to the point where I'm going to rip all this out. Because I've seen online that you can actually get this piece that I'm removing, minus those bits down in the footwells. Um... It isn't cheap, like for somebody like me in Europe to get that, it's not cheap. So I think I might go to the fabricators, draw up the piece I need and uh, get them to make it out of two millimetre and it will take about a month for them to do it. So by that time, I'd have probably had a few more videos out the way on other stuff and it'll be time to then get stuck into this. But by the end of this video, I'm hoping to have this back end all cut out. We'll see. Well, that was a shitload of work and uh, 
The plan was to get out in one piece because it then will be easier to build a template from it and I've also got a lot of holes to know where roughly spot welds go. I mean it was an absolute bastard to get out and I kind of just went crazy at the end with the crowbar which isn't a wise move but the frame rails did survive. I mean there is actually quite a, quite a bit of shitty corrosion underneath really so I'm sort of glad I got this bit out and it should encourage me to have a look at the rest of it but uh, yeah let's take a look anyway. So here we go this is what's left. Um, now if I come over here first I'm going to do this the other side. Probably don't want that in the frame. Um, but I kind of want to leave this piece, right? Because it looks okay. And if it's okay under there, I'm going to leave it alone. Um, I don't know, actually. Like Now I'm looking at it, it's kind of a dumbass move because I could just chop it all off and build my own piece as part of the floor and just kind of angle it up a bit. It doesn't exactly need to be the same shape. It just needs to kind of follow it a little bit. But uh, I think this is all good. You know, there's a, there's a little bit of sort of grey metal knocking around but it's nothing I'd really care about because this as I say is quite a complicated shape I don't want to just be hacking at that all this stuff I've cut away it's basically flat so uh, you know and I can weld it from the top um, one thing I was going to do was drill straight through every spot weld and then uh, yeah weld from underneath but I just thought nah that is a terrible idea so like this I can clean all this up use some weld through primer which I've already bought and um, yeah and basically weld from the top just get it all nice and tacked down and try and do a nice job of it really now I've left this piece because in all fairness to it it doesn't look that bad um, but I don't know I, I, I am tempted to get rid of it as well it depends what I do with the quarter panel but look at that it's almost unheard of it's in absolutely mint condition it's only that one that's shite but that one isn't actually even that bad when you look at it. I mean, you could probably clean that up and run with it if you put a decent coating on it. So I'm still going to think that one over. I'm not going to make any rash moves because once you start cutting, it's all going. You know what I mean? It's hard to put back. So um, here's the only bit left to do. So I'm going to just do that like the other side, but it's just going to extend over there. You know, so that will just be, I mean, all this will probably have to come out apart from that side wall. And then there's just a few little holes there. I'll probably do that with a hole saw and then cut another piece of metal out with the same hole saw, drop it in. And here I'm probably just going to put a rectangle in or just take all of that away up to there so to not disturb the, the, the seat mount. So there's not a massive mount going on. I mean, I could drill these spot welds and just remove all this, but... I'm just I just don't really feel like I need to and that there is staying there I'm just gonna clean that up um, but that's actually just from corrosion creeping along under the seam sealer well there we go what a job eh I mean that was about four hours work um, and I went a bit wild at the end there just because I just lost my resolve because the batteries kept going dead obviously it takes a lot of power to uh, to drill all those spot welds out now I'll be the first to admit that is a shitty way of doing it. Um, I just made do, with, uh, made did with the tools I had. Like there are these like special like anal drill bits that like go into spot welds and uh, you know you mark the center of the spot weld. But I had a look at them and and I think they'd be great if you can see the spot welds. But when you can't see the spot weld, you kind of need like to be drilling out that upper surface wider. Than the diameter of the weld itself so you can kind of be a little bit off center sometimes that's what i found anyway i'm just going by what what i did there but it's good that i got that piece out in one bit i flattened it out now and chucked it back in the jeep um and it looks like it's lining up good enough for me to make a template out of cardboard and include the pieces that i took away separately from it and give it to the fabricators and say punch me that out of uh whatever you know laser cut me that out of two mil and then, um, you know, I should have a pretty decent floor in the back. And uh, yeah, but there's a lot of other work to do. There's going to be weld through primer, Dinatrol rust work. The frame's got a little bit of a corrosion on one side where I think the guy was shagging it. Just a theory. Perhaps some porno mags were left in the back. They went sodden. They literally just burnt out that frame like 
on the film Alien. I'm interested to hear what you guys think anyway, because I'm actually thinking about doing a cut and fold on the rear quarter panels. And if you remember the old bumper that I built for the cut and fold I did on my diesel, I've still got that bumper and it can go straight on to the four litre. Um, and there you go, you know, it's got, it's got a nice looking bumper basically. But because I wanted to keep the four litre original, now, what, before I say that, it isn't going to be a full restoration job because I don't have the skills nor the tools to do it. My way of restoration is just get the Jeep looking good and running good and not build it into what I've already built my diesel into, which I think is quite a lot of work, you know, considering I've been on that thing for 10 years. I don't really want to do that again. Maybe 31s and like a two inch lift and change a few parts out on it, make it tougher, clean up a few areas that you get corrosion, you know, wrap to line a few little bits on it at the down low, but maybe keep the top like a different sort of shiny paint color, you know, stuff like that. You know, just make it like a nice functional Jeep, but nothing too, too crazy. That's what I'm thinking with the four liter. So I would like to do a cut and fold on it, but another part of me thinks maybe not because then it becomes further away from sort of looking like an original Jeep shape, you know? So I'm interested to hear what you think about that. When you look at those, um, lower quarter panels, they're not really that bad. I think I can save them. And with enough cavity wax jizz and paint on the outside, I can probably get the rust to a point where it's gonna last a lifetime, you know, because certain type, you know, like if you've just got surface rust, you can slow it down to the point where you don't even have to give a shit about it really anymore. And, and it could do two, three lifetimes, you know, it's, the way it goes with, with with different sort of levels of corrosion. But anyway, I'm going to stop yammering on because you're probably all like falling asleep. I hope you enjoyed that video. I'll see you again on another video. Cheers for all your support. Thanks to the guys on Patreon um, for your support. You know, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want, if you don't want to. Totally understand. And uh, see you again. Take care.